Spotfire has best-in-class data wrangling capabilities built right into the product. Data wrangling in Spotfire is unique in that it's inline, meaning that you're not doing your preparation once and then exporting into your visualization software. You're actually able to go back and forth, change your data structures, and continuously iterate and wrangle your data as you need to for your analysis and visualization. Now, data wrangling is often thought of as data prep, but it's really much broader. So in Spotfire, we are familiar with these five fundamental building blocks. Now there's data access, data table, transformation, visualizations, and analysis. Taking a step further and looking just at the data table and transformations building block, we can do what we consider data wrangling. And this is primarily done in the data canvas where you can explore, structure, clean, enrich, and validate your data. So let's take a look. Here, we're just going to give you a brief overview of the data canvas and in separate video lessons, we'll talk about the different operations. So in the data canvas, the far left node is always your first data source in your data canvas workflow. That's the initial data that you've brought in. And the far right node is going to be your data table. Now, the data tables are what are used in the Spotfire interface for creating different charts and visualizations. Uh, these are all selectable from data tables. So when I go into my data canvas, you'll see that I've constructed these three data tables and I can select those in my visualizations as well as my data functions and other analysis. Now, when you go through the workflow, you can start from the source data and you can choose to add by joins with columns or stacking with rows, new data sets, and you can get a preview of each of these data sets uh, here at the bottom. Now here we can see the result of those and this whole line is gonna give me the results from adding different data. Now when I click one of these nodes, I can also click information and I can see source information about where that data came from. I can also see any transformations that I'll do on that data and how that might show up. So to do a transformation, you would just click the node and you would add transformation and here you can actually choose different transformation options. So for filter rows, let's say I wanna do customer age greater than 30 and customer age less than 55 and hit okay. And then I'd hit okay. That's actually gonna add a little number there and that's gonna be indicating the number of transformations. And we'll see the transformation here on that node where I can edit it or delete it. And as I go to different nodes, you'll see if they have transformations or they don't and the details of that transformation are also shown in this auditable log that's created for you automatically. Now to see a full log of the data table, you can go to data and data table properties. And by clicking the data, you can go into uh, source information on that data table and you can see each individual step and copy it to your clipboard. And that way you again have an auditable log. Now, another thing to point out is replacing the data and managing the data table. You can rename the data table quite simply with just the rename button. But if you use this replace button, be aware that it's gonna wipe out all the transformations on this canvas. If you wanna actually replace just an individual node, an individual data source, you should use the replace option that is on that node itself and not this replace option, which will actually replace the entire data table. Now I wanted to simulate an error for you. So what I did on this New York sales data source, I actually excluded the column on customer age, which created this error, which you can see with this red exclamation mark. And in this exclamation mark, I can select it and see exactly where the error is on that node. So that allows me to go through and fix my issue by removing this excluding column. That's gonna fix my error. Now that I'm done, I've wrangled the data how I'd like to, I can always close the data canvas and reopen it by selecting this bottom left icon. That wraps it up for the data canvas overview. The other videos will show more details on the operations.